Hello, and welcome to another Linux tutorial. Today I want to talk about disk cloning, how we can get an exact copy of a disk. I'll be focusing on disks that hold the operating system, but the same method can be applied to data disks that don't hold any operating system. We will use the dd command, which is used to copy entire disks or partitions. By the way, according to Wikipedia, dd stands for copy and convert. So why isn't it called cc, you might ask? So simply because cc was already in use by the C compiler, so they had to settle for dd. I'm going to use a virtual machine to keep everything in one place and make it easier to understand. But everything I'm going to talk about fully applies to physical machines. And wherever there might be a difference between a physical machine and the virtual one, I'll make it very clear. In order to clone a drive, I'm going to use a live session. That means running Linux off a USB flash drive without actually installing it. The reason I'll be using a live session is that cloning a disk that's currently mounted and used to run the operating system is really unhealthy and error prone. Since live sessions run off the RAM, the disk that's about to be cloned can be looked at just as a long sequence of bytes. So it doesn't matter if it only contains data files or a full blown operating system. So we have three plays here. The first one is the disk that Linux is installed on. And usually it will be the SSD that's inside your computer. The second one is the target. It goes without saying that to clone a disk, you must have another disk whose size is at least the same. So it will usually be an external SSD. The third player is the USB stick that we'll use to run the live session off. If I would be cloning my actual physical disk, I would actually need the external SSD and the USB stick. But since I'm using a virtual machine, I just create a new virtual disk and it will represent the external SSD. And instead of a USB stick for the live session, I'll just be using the virtual CD-ROM. First, let's understand what is the disk that we want to clone. There are several ways to do it. One way is to use the GUI. On the non desktop, we have the disks utility. We can see that on this disk, I have two partitions, which are the boot partition and the main partition where Linux is installed. And we can also see this list on the left. This is the only disk on this machine, apart from the CD or DVD drive. So it's pretty clear that this is the disk that we want to clone. To see how it's called, we can look at the details of any of its partitions, and we can see that they all start with dev VDA. So the disk we want to clone is dev VDA. We can see the same thing using the terminal by running the command ls block. First, we have a bunch of loop devices, which are not real disks. They are files that are used as emulated disks. Then we have sr0, which is the CD-ROM, and then we have VDA and its partitions. Notice how the partitions have mount points. It means that the operating system is currently using them to function properly. By the way, VD is used for virtual disks. In a physical machine, everything would be pretty much the same, but the name of the disk would start with SD, or sometimes NVMe, instead of VD. Let's now attach additional storage to the machine to serve as the clone destination. In a physical machine, it would probably mean plugging in an external SSD. In my case, since it's a virtual machine, I'll add a new virtual disk. In any case, we know that its size has to be at least 9 gigabytes. Right away, we can see in the disks utility a new entry that represents the new empty disk. And we can see that this new disk is called dev vdb. We could go ahead and clone our disk to the new empty disk. But as I said in the beginning, it's probably safer to use a live session so that the disk to be cloned won't be in use by the operating system. In a physical machine, you'd probably use a USB stick with an ISO file. I'll just use my virtual CD-ROM for that purpose. Any distro that supports live sessions should do the job. I'll just go with Ubuntu. Let's now restart the computer to load the live session.
Let's run ls block again to see if any of the names for the disks has changed. And we can see that the disk with the two partitions is still called VDA, whereas the new disk is still called VDB. Notice how now VDA1 and VDA2 don't have mount points. If we would have a swap partition, it would probably still have a mount point, but swap partitions can be cloned safely, even if they do have a mount point. So the clone source is VDA, and the clone destination is VDB. Let's run the dd command to clone the disk. To specify the input, we use the if flag. To specify the output, which is the destination, we use the of flag. We can also use the status flag to track the progress and see how much was already copied. The dd command has no warnings and will happily wipe out your entire disk. So always double check your source and destination before pressing enter. Everything from VDA is now being copied to VDB. It will take a while and the bigger your disk, the more time it will take. Okay, it took a while, but it's done. We now have a clone of our disk on VDB, which might be an external SSD on a physical machine. Let's see the updated drives and partitions. And we can see that VDB now has the very same partitions as VDA. If it would be a physical machine, I would now unplug the external SSD and keep it somewhere safe, so it can be used whenever I want to restore my disk. Let's quit the live session by ejecting the CD-ROM and rebooting. And now let's say that I made some changes to the computer that I'm not happy with. As an example, I'll change my wallpaper and create many files on the desktop. Okay, so my desktop is all messed up, and I'm not happy with it. I want to restore Ubuntu from the backup we created. Once again, restoring a partition while it's in use is probably not the best idea, so I'll use a live session again. And now I'm going to override the contents of my disk with the contents of the backup. In a physical machine, that's when I would plug back in the external backup disk. Okay, it's done. Let's end the live session and see if the restore actually worked. And we can see that the wallpaper was restored and all of the useless files were removed. Next thing I want to go over is creating a backup for a single partition. This is another virtual machine I have. This virtual machine has two operating systems installed, Ubuntu and PopOS. I use dual boot to choose which one I want to load. Let's load PopOS. Let's see what disks and partitions we have here.
we can see that we have the virtual CD-ROM, SR0, and then we have one disk, VDA. This disk has five partitions. We can see that two of them are big. We have VDA3, which is about 23 gigabytes, and we have VDA5, which is about 25 gigabytes. Since VDA5 has a mount point, we can know that that's where Pop! OS is installed, and deduce that VDA3 is where Ubuntu is installed. Let's say that I want to backup only the Ubuntu partition, which is VDA3. Since this partition is not in use right now, I don't have to use a live session. Let's insert a new disk to save the backup too. Again, in a physical machine, you will just plug in an external SSD. And let me create a partition in this new drive. We now need to format this partition so it will have a proper file system. We now need to mount the partition so we can write to it. And if we run lsblock again, we can see that VDB1 now has a mount point. Let's back up the Ubuntu partition to a file. Okay, the backup is ready. Let's now reboot the machine and load Ubuntu. And again, let's say that I made some big changes to Ubuntu that I'm not happy about. and I want to use my backup to get back to where I was. But this time I don't want to restore the entire disk, I only want to restore the Ubuntu partition. Again, I don't want to change the Ubuntu partition while it's being used by the operating system, so let me log back in to Pop! OS, and from there we will restore the backup to the Ubuntu partition. Let's plug in again the disk with the backup. And it should contain the image file we created. Here it is. And let's override the Ubuntu partition with the content of this image file.
Okay, I mounted VDB1 again to MNT and let's restore the Ubuntu partition. And once it's done, we know that Ubuntu was restored. Let's reboot and load Ubuntu. And we see that even though we didn't restore the entire disk and no changes were made to PopOS, Ubuntu was restored. One last thing I want to talk about is what happens if we clone a disk to a bigger disk. So once again, I'm in the first virtual machine and this one only has one operating system installed. And we can see that it currently has two disks. The one we're currently using to run Ubuntu and the second one that's much bigger. Let's say that we decided that the disk we're currently using is too small for our needs and we want to move everything to the bigger disk. So just like before, I'm going to log in to a live session. So the operating system won't be running off the disk I'm about to clone. And let's clone our disk to the new, bigger disk. And it's done. I'm now going to remove the original disk from the machine and only leave the bigger disk in the machine. And let's open the disks utility. We can see the Ubuntu main partition. And right after it, there is a big chunk of the disk that is free space. If we check how much disk space is available to us at the moment, we can see that the free space is not available. What we can do is extend the Ubuntu partition. So it will also use the free space. To do that, let's first run fdisk on our disk. And that disk recognizes a size mismatch. That's because the operating system is only aware of the disk space we had on the original disk. But now we're actually using a bigger disk. So fdisk can inform the operating system of the updated disk size. So let's run a write operation. So fdisk will inform the operating system of the updated disk size and the size mismatch will be fixed. Now let's get back to the disks utility. Let's choose the Ubuntu partition. Then click on the cog and select resize. And I'm dragging the size marker along the slider all the way to the end. And let's resize. And now the Linux partition uses the free space. We can also see it from the terminal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.